Hey everyone, Cody here, and today we're going to be doing another dabbed painting with the trowel. Um, hopefully I can not mess up this painting like I did the other one. If you haven't seen the last video, go watch it. The painting was cool, but I used too much paint. I just used way too much. What I need to do is just use uh, uh, as much as I think is just enough, and then if it's not enough, slowly add a little bit more because it, it ended up pooling together um, and I missed a few spots and actually a little dragonfly um, got embedded in the paint so that was interesting. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to make this painting and we're going to try to not mess it up. And I'm wondering about maybe putting the spots of paint first and doing the lighter color like the white and kind of branching it out first. And then after that, slowly adding the other colors, the yellow and then black. So these are the colors we're using. Um, we've got black, you know, plastic. We've got white, and then we've got uh, we've got like a bright yellow. Okay, so we're gonna try that today. Just as kind of you know, to really kind of try something different with the method, and to to try to master it because I really feel like these these dab paintings where I'm dabbing the paint over and over again. I really feel like there's something there. We just haven't gotten it down yet. And I want to share this journey with you guys because I've never really seen anyone do this technique. So if I could become the first where it's really prevalent and I start following it and it becomes big, you know, you'll have been there with that. So anyway, we're going to start with white. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some white in some of these areas. And I I'm going to put just enough that I think is enough. Um, where it's not going to, you know, start pooling into the center of the painting, which is the problem that I had with the last painting after I had made it. And I also want to try to get the, I want to try to get the most out of the paint so I'm not wasting the paint um, as much as possible. And to really kind of uh, get these pockets of color because another issue I run into with these dead paintings is that once I've put the paint on there, um, sometimes the colors start to run together so I don't get any clear, I don't get any real, um, I don't get any real pockets of that color. Like they just start to run together is, is what I was trying to say. And yes, I am painting over another painting that I did in one of the other paintings or the other videos where I scraped the paint and maybe I'll put that in the description or show it up on screen. But um, this was a scraped painting. I don't remember if I recorded it or not, but um, wasn't happy with how dark it was when it came out. So, you know, we're going to paint over. So what we're going to do now is we'll move into yellow. So we're going to put, you know, pockets of yellow on the painting. And we're going to kind of branch it out and fill it up a little bit. I'll just put a little down there. We'll put a lot of yellow right there. And then we're going to fill in the gaps with black. And then we're just going to keep doing that until we have, you know, the painting is full. And so we're going to pull all this yellow out and we're going to kind of, you know, run it over the different areas. <laughs> that sound is so weird. A suction. paint distributed so now we'll move into the black and then we're going to move into and then we're going to just start adding more of the colors kind of in layers I suppose um, after that so we'll put the black here and then we'll put some up in this corner and over here I think we're going to need a little more in there and maybe just a little in this corner although I probably should have just left that yellow I don't have any white in the corner so it's not exactly balanced and that Kind of bothers me a little bit but it is what it is so you can already see that it's starting to kind of mix and make the little waves that you get when you do this and 
and I'm trying to just push the paint straight up and down. Um, when you start to go at an angle, then it starts to kind of smear the colors, and I don't want that. I'm really just, on this one, I'm trying to use just enough paint to actually cover the painting. The problem I had, I've had in the past with these paintings that I'll just, I just tend to use so much paint and then it, it pulls, like it pulls to the center because that's the weak part of the, the canvas. Um, and then it, and then that just kind of ruins the colors because then they just kind of become this big old blob of colors. Um, but this isn't, uh, this isn't enough paint, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and keep doing this where we keep adding the paint and keep pulling it out and see where we can go with it. We're going to go over the edges of the, the colors, but I kind of want to keep the big pockets of it. So we're going to add more black. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to try to start filling in these gaps where there's no paint. So now we'll do some more white. And I already know that when we do this, it's going to start turning it gray. I don't think that can be helped, honestly. So we're gonna put a lot of white in this little pocket here to try to kind of fill in some of these gaps. Do the same here and the same here. And then I'll, we'll just go ahead and fill in the yellow. Now another route that I could go is just pulling the colors over and over into different pockets. So like taking this yellow and bringing it all the way to the black, then bringing this over here, and then this over here, and kind of doing that over and over again. I've done that as well, and we can kind of see what that does. What that tends to do is it tends to really mix the colors and give you some like really dynamic mixtures like where you have you know you start to get the grays and then you get you get smaller pockets of the color and I don't know I don't know how to explain that um, but instead of like big blotches of color then you start to get you know little pockets of little pieces of color so it's like these little tiny drops and the little teardrop flame looking things that we have, you start to get more of that. So we'll go ahead and try it and see what happens. So we're gonna pull that color. We're just gonna keep taking the big, the big puddles of color and really pulling them out into the other colors to, to really mix these colors and bring them together. I, I feel like we have enough um, paint on the canvas to, to cover the whole thing. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that all the little pieces of the canvas are covered. And it's, it's a little challenging to do um, 
to do to color cover this whole canvas um, just because the, the paint is in little pockets as opposed to um, how do I explain it instead of being all over the canvas like because it's not like base coated um, which I, I was thinking about and I could probably, I'd probably have some good success if I if I started base coating my, my canvases before I did this. That way, whatever, you know, I could do one of the colors of the canvas. And if there was little gaps, then you wouldn't see it because the base coat would be the same color. So I actually was thinking about that. And I, I probably will do it on the next dab painting that we do. Um, just so that, it, you know, if that happens, then... You don't really see the background be because it's part of the the same colors we're already using so i actually might do that um with the next painting that we do so it looks like we've got a lot of paint still kind of here so we're going to pull that into we're going to pull some of that black out and the white from over there and we're going to really try to cover up these spots here because like i said I, I don't think i need any more paint i think we're I think I have enough paint on the painting where I don't need to um, pull these, where I need to put more paint on the, the canvas. But what I really don't want to do is disrupt some of these little pools that I have of color. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably speed up the video while I fill in any of the little gaps of the red from the, from the canvas. I'm going to fill in those gaps. Uh, but I'll speed it up so you don't have to sit here and listen to it. Okay, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of black over here, just because it's starting to kind of pull together. And I wanna keep some distinct little puddles of color almost. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit more paint, just enough to kind of pull, pull that out and use it in some of these other areas. And then we're just gonna try to blend it into these pockets. Okay, so I've gone through and I've looked it over to make sure that there were no gaps in the paint. And it's one of the downsides, I think, to doing, sorry, I was washing my hand, or washing my tool. One of the downsides to doing this type of painting is that because I'm using really liquidy paint, when I do it, it tends to move. That's, that's one downside, but other than that, I mean, I really enjoy this technique and, and making these types of paintings. But it's done, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. So here's the final piece right here. Scoot back and get a thumbnail. Okay. All right. So here we go. We've got a lot of these tiny, tiny little waves 
with gray and black and white. A lot of these little kind of teardrop, fire, fire drops, waves, I don't know what you want to call them. Fire waves. <laughs> you can see that we've got a, a lot of tiny, tiny ones over here. Looks like I do have a couple gaps I need to take care of. And usually what I'll do is I'll let it dry and then I'll go back and kind of put a little bit in to fill it. Overall, it turned out pretty good. I do like it. It's pretty vibrant. It's got a little gray in it, but it's not too bad. And uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. But that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.